I'm Mike Haddock and we're in Roskilde, Denmark and I'm going to talk about the difference between old school brick walls and new school brick walls. Because somebody dropped a set of plans by my house and they wanted me to build a brick wall and I looked at the plans and I said no way. So what I want to do is I want to go back in time. That's the Roskilde Cathedral behind us. I've seen a lot of different ways to do a brick wall. I really believe in the old school, you know that. But anyway, the whole video on the front is going to be about brick walls in Europe. And at the end of the video, I'm going to go inside that cathedral back there. We're going to look at it. That was built in the 1100s. And then we're going to just look at the Viking Museum down where the boats are. And we're going to go in a friend's house in a traditional Danish house in a village in Denmark. So right now, just let me show you where we are in the map, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I'm just going to show you where we're at. This is Germany, this is Sweden, this is Norway, and this whole area here is Denmark. So right now I'm in a town called Roskilde. So when I was inside the cathedral, I asked the guy about these walls. He told me they've been here for over 800 years. So if someone's building a wall for 800 years, and it's been there 800 years, and I think, as a builder, that's the way it should be done. Let me take you and look at it, and then you can decide at the end. Let's look at how thick the wall is first. It's got one brick here, one brick here, so it's two bricks thick, and you got a half brick, a full brick, and another half brick. So that's what's making the thickness of our wall. And as we're looking at it, they lay a brick, they lay a brick, and then they take a half brick, or a full brick and put it this way to tie into the other side of the wall. So there's no center parts, there's no wall ties, there's no rebar. The only thing holding this brick wall together is brick and mortar. Anybody who's been around brickwork for a while, we look on the bottom, and right here we have granite. And that's what you call a water table. I explained that in my other series. The reason you have a water table is when the water falls down, splashes on here and it splashes against the stone it freezes in the winter and if this was just brick it would fall apart so granite is a real tough stone that's why they do that so first of all you got a water table and you bond your brick together nothing in the middle so we're gonna look up on the top of it right up on top of it they got that terracotta tile and if you look at it they put one piece up this way see it goes like this the other piece goes on top so no water gets into the wall because if water gets into the wall that's where you get your effervescence now the sun's out a little bit but you see the way they did that and they, when you build something like that and it has uh, joints in it the water is going to get in it and that right there is where you end up with your effervescence anytime water gets behind something that's when you get your effervescence now this brick is like a glass, it's got a glass finish. So if they're going to patch up here, all they do is get the cement, they wet it, and they sponge it in, and then they clean off the brick. And you can do it for hundreds of years that way. And that's the, the front of the wall, and as we go over here to the other side, we're going to notice that the wall continues. The only difference is, they plastered it, and then they painted it. And that's the back side of those tiles. That's the back side of that wall, and it goes over here, and it goes into the house. Now, if you ever ask me, does these walls crack? Yes, they do. Here's a perfect example. Because you got 150 feet of wall, I don't care what you put in a rebar or what, they got to crack somewhere. But see, when you're building a wall like this, old school, you can use a, a much softer cement that kind of gives because you already took your problem with the water away from the wall and you got your water table. Now back in Pennsylvania they put the brick all the way down to the bottom you have to use a harder cement. So yes it, uh, there is a difference on what kind of cement you use and what kind of project you're using. Here is an example of what happens to brick when there's no water table. This is a modern building. You gotta keep patching. Here's why you use the water table because when you don't have a water table all the cement joints will be falling out. 
and you got to keep fixing them. See, this was a little crack in here too at one time. Just by me doing it, matter of fact, I cracked through the brick. But that's normal. You get a wall that's uh, 150 feet long, it's got a crack. That's normal. All the rebar in the world ain't going to stop anything from cracking. Now here's a little offshoot of that wall. <clears throat> and they put uh, granite top on it. See the granite top? That covers everything. But when you put these little granite tops on like this, always going to see a little crack here. You're always going to see a little crack here. And the reason is because this expands and contracts with the weather. That's why, and you're always going to get water in here, I don't care how. All that cocking and everything is a big joke in my view. It's only temporary. This right here is a much better method. Now here's a little bit of a modern version of it. You see, they used every kind of brick there was. They didn't uh, make anything special. Then they come over the top where the water goes away from the wall. Then you get over here and look at it. It's all different brick. And on the bottom they used a, a random granite. But masonry, you can do anything you want as long as it works. Simple. Now here's another little version of that uh, brick wall. They got the tiles on top and they laid a brick. You see on the very bottom, they got it so the rain don't get up in it. You look behind the wall, they plastered it and painted. Here's another good thing to consider when you're doing a sign like that and they got letters on it, you indent it so it's not hitting the weather all the time and it won't wear away. See where that's wearing away a little bit. I'm just going to show you a couple pictures here of one of these walls that was in front of one of those castles that they were redoing and fixing. They do crack, but you can see how the whole thing's solid and bonded together with brick. It's easy to fix. If a new school wall with all the block and rebar and everything, it's almost impossible to fix. It's hard to match the bricks, but this is old school. I like it a lot. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about old school, new school. Now I showed you with them walls the way they built them. This is old school. They just dig their foundation, they put their rocks, their water table, their bricks solid, and then they put their tile and they're done. Well this is what they wanted me to do new school. They wanted to pour a big footer down here, put rebar in it, modify it under the footer, then they wanted to come up with blocks on the inside, and then stop here and go up here with blocks like this, have rebar cone all the way up into here. I've put all my brick here, flashing with metal and wall ties going into my brick. These are my brick here. These are my brick over here. Uh, black paper, they wanted pins, and then they wanted a, some type of cap over here with pins going up into the cap, bituminous coating. In other words, this is like 150% uh, American overkill. There's no reason for it. This is old school. I like it a lot better, simple. I just want to point that out. I want to go a little farther with this video. Uh, this is the way, basically, they laid that wall out. Doesn't matter what kind of bond they use. There's different kind of bonds. They got English bonds, Fleming bonds, uh, common bonds. Everybody calls it something different. Everywhere got their own ideas. It doesn't matter as long as the whole wall put together. When they bond something, they go like this. And then they might tie it in here, go this way, tie that in, go this way, tie that in, tie that in, tie that in, keep going and, and until the whole wall is built solid, whichever way they want to do it. There's a lot of different ways to bond things and put it together. That's basically what they did. Now when you see a building with wall ties and you see it with weep holes and flashing and rebar, that's new school. Problem with new school is it's only temporary because they don't build buildings to last more than 35 to 50 years in America unless it's maybe a big skyscraper. I don't live in an earthquake area and I don't live in a, a hurricane area, but 
depending on what you're building, you have to go back in time and see what works. So this is a piece of rebar right here. Ripped this out of a footer that I poured in 1972. Everything in my area rots away. The only kind of metal I see last at all is stainless steel. Everything else rots away, especially when there's a lot of moisture in the air. Now if you're in Arizona, it might be a different story. But this is basically the way they did it. They've been doing it for hundreds of years. I could build these walls five times faster than a new school wall, and it's five times better. A lot of different ways to look at it. The video is just food for thought. So I figured I'd throw it in to make sure you have an understanding. I hope it helps. So let me go over the old school way of doing a brick wall. First thing, they dug down about three feet they came up with their stone, there's no footers, there's no rebar, as a matter of fact rebar rots away and if it's too thick it's going to expand and bust it anyway. There's no block work behind it, it's solid brick one on one side, then they go this way with the other one, then they put their terracotta tile on top so the water comes over it and down and splashes against the water table so it don't get into the joints of the brick. Also, by keeping the water away from the top of the wall, it keeps you from getting effervescence. So this is the cathedral in Roskilde, Denmark, and we're going to go in real quick look at it. And I'm going to run down, it's over the hill, to the Viking Museum where they made all the Viking boats. And then we're going to go look at that uh, traditional Danish house in the village. Now just to show you, we're inside the cathedral, and you can see they painted a lot of the brick on the inside. I'm going to look at this round brick pillar. Another idea. So, this cathedral is 800 years old, and this is where they buried a lot of the kings. Here's uh, some more ideas in brickwork. I just want to point that out. And uh, when they've been walking over these things for 800 years, and they've been building something for 800 years, there's nothing wrong with building it that way. This is where they did all the, they buried all the kings. You can see, I guess they're the important ones. This is really some uh, heavy duty artwork. Now the Viking Museum is over there. Right here is where they make uh, all the Viking boats. What's the way you'll catch them out and sail out of here. I've been coming to Denmark for 23 years and I'm at a friend's house. Uh, they live in an old village and I think it's a nice little offshoot. I'm just going to show you a little bit about it. So come on, I'll show you. This is, uh, this is a thatch roof. They last up to like 30 years. So you don't have to do shingles. You could use thatch if you want. And the whole, uh, it's made out of brick. And then it's just plastered. It's a real tutor. There's uh, no foundation. And uh, it's very, very charming. So I, I just wanted to show you this as an offshoot. Come on in, I'll show you inside. This is a Danish house. And we're just going to show you the kitchen. This is uh, the inside coming in off the door. Fireplace, couch, and look it in towards the kitchen and outside. So that's it for uh, my video on brick walls. I always say there's no right or wrong way to do it, and I've just shown you these videos as uh, food for thought. That's all. So I'm going to end the video just walking down the streets of Roskill. Oh. Uh, I'm walking through the town of Roskill and uh, show you some scenes. So thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock and that's it.